After making the last video on 3D GBA games, I was kind of hoping to look at some other consoles for a bit so I wouldn't have to make you squint so much at these wonderfully chunky pixels. But sometimes I stumble across a game that's just so cool that I cannot help but talk about it. In fact, I can't help it so much that I'm even making a spin-off series to justify talking about them. Because, though many games are interesting, I can't always justify making a full 13 minute length video just about that one game. Welcome to Port Patrol Portable, the show where I quickly look at weird, interesting, or knockoff ports of video games, and today we're taking a look at Drome Racers for the Game Boy Advance. Drome Racers, or Lego Drome Racers as everyone insists on calling it, even though that's literally not its name, was a 2002 racing game originally released on a lot of consoles by Attention to Detail, who never made a single game after this one as they went into liquidation. That bodes well for us, doesn't it? But of course, we don't care about that version of the game, and apparently neither did anyone else. The GBA version of the game was developed by Mobus Games, a studio that made nothing but awful games until 2005, where they suddenly decided to actually give a shit about the stuff they made, changed their name to Rockstar Leeds, and started work on some GTA games. Set in the space year 2015. It's a typical racing game in which you do typical racing game things, such as race. As you can probably tell using your eyes, this game is an absolute treat to look at. I mean, sure, it might be a bit bare when compared to the likes of Smashing Drive, but what it lacks in textured graphics, it more than makes up for in just how smooth it plays. I could not believe that this was a GBA game the first time I saw it, and it must be said, even without extensive use of textures, the tracks are all still very nicely detailed, with distinct scenery that really helps them stand out on their own. Though it would have been nice to see 3D cars to complete the look, perhaps I shouldn't get too greedy here. What really blew me away, apart from all the other things about it that also blew me away, is just how crisp this game is. Put it next to something like the GBA port of Doom, and it doesn't even look like they're on the same system. It's quite a feat to look this sharp and lovely when the screen it's displayed on is only 240 by 160 pixels big. But how does it manage to look so good? Well, I donned my Digital Foundry hat and got to work investigating, using Microsoft Paint. When comparing Drome Racers and Doom, it's immediately obvious that the reason Drome Racers appears higher resolution is because, well, it literally is. You can see in Doom that all the pixels in the game window are rectangular, meaning that the horizontal resolution of the game has essentially been slashed in half, giving Doom its very blocky look. Drome Racers runs at full resolution, however, so it doesn't have this problem. Also, the lack of textures in this game works to its advantage, as objects in the distance don't just merge into an ugly mash of pixels like they do in most other 3D GBA games. It's all solid colours, making it much easier to distinguish. Not to mention, the view distance has also been pared back a bit, meaning that the game never really has an opportunity to get that messy in the distance, like Smashing Drive or Need for Speed Underground do, while it results in a game that looks more super FX than PlayStation 1, considering that the game was originally meant to be played on a 3 inch screen, honestly the simpler graphics of Drome Racers works much better in its favour. Not that I'm dissing games like Smashing Drive for being so visually complex, not at all I love this type of stuff, but from a graphical standpoint, the developers behind Drome Racers were very smart to take this all into consideration, and their hard work has very clearly paid off. As for how the game plays, probably should have mentioned that first, but whatever, it's a pretty solid little racing game. I mean, sure, it ain't no Mario Kart, but it's cut from the same kart racing cloth, and once you get used to its rather floaty controls, it can be quite fun to play. Each team has three different vehicles, and which one you're driving depends on what type of track you're on, and they all control pretty distinctively. I like how the points you gain from winning a race can then be used to upgrade your vehicles, and there's a kind of interesting 
system where before every race, you can enter a drag race which then determines where you place on the starting grid. Not gonna lie, I never thought that I would find a drag racing game fun. And you know what? I was absolutely right. The only major complaint I have is that I wish the handling would be a little bit tighter. Some of the corners can be brutal to take at these incredibly high speeds that the game wants you to believe you're doing, but I'm just not feeling, truth be told. The tracks could also be a bit more exciting to race around. For a kart racing game that comes complete with power-ups, the tracks are a bit bare bones. There's no track hazards or anything like that which you'd usually expect from a game like this. And that pretty much sums up this game. It's a 3D GBA racing game that apparently has something to do with LEGO, uh, despite not having a single LEGO brick in it as far as I could see. 